life seen again. The year has started. March, we are in the third month. And so far, so good, Lord. You have protected your children. You've been with your children. You have loved us. You have loved the world. We pray the Lord today. The word that is coming will be the one that you want us to hear that will change the way we approach things. Thank you for answering our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we pray with us. Let the church say, Amen. 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 Come on, let's put your hands to God. We are in a series of uh, catching up stuff and making sure we get things done. This month, March, the month of March, we are talking about the Lord is, sorry, we are talking about um, identifying sin, allowing the Holy Spirit to lead. We will talk about identifying sin, set yourself from sin, draw nearer to God through Jesus, allow the Holy Spirit to lead. These are the things, the package we want to talk about this month. And it's all in line with our main theme, the yearly theme, which is the Lord is doing a new thing. And folks, um, Christianity is very interesting. Christianity is very interesting. The journey comes with a requirement. And the requirement is what will qualify you to be where God is. It comes to the environment. And if you fail to uh, comply, then you are failing to uh, be able to enter. There is no way anybody will come to America through the right channel and anybody, any authority will tell him he hasn't done anything wrong. Well, you have visa, you are, you are a citizen, or you are you, you, are, you have a, a green card, whatever, but you know, looking at you, you don't like you, go back to your country. What, what, what are you doing? You gave me the authority to enter, and so there is no way. So the concept has been followed. You have been given the, the, the power to enter. And when you understand the concept of Christianity, when you abide by it, God gives you the power, the authority to enter. And to make it, and no power can retain you. That's right. So that's what I want us to understand. We are taking serious consideration this week, today, identifying sin. What is sin? When we say sin, what is sin? Sin comes in just one direction. In the in the religious context, when we say sin. Sin is a transgression against divine law. Transgression against divine law. In the context of Christianity, when we say sin, it is a transgression that is against divine law. And so for you to avoid it, then you must make sure you don't do anything that is against the law given by God. Will you say amen? amen? And so, let's quickly look into the scriptures and see what naturally comes as a sin. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 3 to 13. Ezekiel chapter 18 gives us a picture of what sin is about. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 3 to 13. And I'm reading from the language. I love it when I see people opening their Bible, uh, the, the, the paper Bible, not the tech, tech Bible. I love it. I see a couple of guys opening their paper Bible. Amen. <laughs> Let's go back to paper Bible. The day the technology will crash you, <laughs> you will be in trouble. And the day your internet will not work, then you know technology that has a limit. But the paper will never lie. That's right. Amen. Amen. Is there a giant over there? Oh my goodness. I see you with your paper Bible. God bless you. Let's read. As surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, you will no longer quote this proverb in Israel. For everyone belongs to me, the parent as well as the child. Both alike belong to me. The one who sins. Is the one who will die. Mm. Mm. 
The Lord is speaking. Verse 5. Suppose there is a righteous man who does what is just and right. He does not eat at the mountain shrines or look at the idols of Israel. He does not defile his neighbor's wife or have sexual relationship with a woman during a period. It's a sin. If you don't know, we have left that we are reading right away. If you are not here and so to speak, you are whether you are married or whatever, and your woman is during that period, time frame. Do not. It's a sin if you don't know. It's a big serious sin against the Lord. If you ask me why, I can't tell you that God says it's a sin. Don't have sex with a woman during her period. Let's continue. I went to the right enough. Let me move on. He does not oppress anyone, too, but returns what he took in pledge for a lie. So, for a loan. He does not commit robbery, but gives the food, but gives his food to the hungry and provides clothing for the naked. He does not lead or lay to them at interest or take a profit from them. He, he withholds his hand from doing wrong and judges fairly between two parties. He follows my decrees and faithfully keeps my laws. That man is righteous. He will surely live, declares the sovereign Lord. Suppose he has a violent son who shares blood and, and does any of these other things. Though the father has done none of them, he eats at the mountain shrines, he defiles his neighbor's wife. What does this mean is that suppose he has a, the father is good, the father is doing all things better. But the son is not. And the God is making reference. Suppose the son does that. Even though the father didn't do it, suppose the son does it, God doesn't like it. It becomes a sin to the father also. 12. He oppresses the poor and needy. He commits robbery. He does not return what he took in pledge. He looks to the idols. He does Testable things. He lends an interest and takes a profit. Will such a man live? He will not, because he has done all these detestable things. He is to be put to death. His blood will be on his own head. Amen. 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 Folks, sin is not an interesting thing God likes. Sin brings catastrophes, which we will always call it disaster, consequences. Sin will bring consequences, and the consequences will lead to death. So, what we are going to understand today is that once sin is introduced, you take away the chances of God coming in to help any situation. God is driven out. When sin is introduced, God is driven out. God is not seen in your environment. So have that at the back of your mind. What the Bible is, what is sin? When the Bible talks about sin, what is sin according to the Bible? When the Bible talks about sin, then what is sin according to the Bible? According to the Bible, the Christian view sin is an evil human act which violates the, 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 the rational nature of man as well as God's nature and his eternal law. There is a rational. You see, folks, if nobody tells you about Christian, Christianity or God or anything, once you are born, you, you develop that concept immediately. A child, little child of one year, two years, three years, four years, nobody taught the, that child how to sin. But the child begins to understand. This is sin. He knows. And so when you do anything wrong and you, you, you tell him or her, he, he immediately 
receives that. And when he's doing something wrong, he knows he's running away. Nobody has told him, nobody has taught him. This is simple, did nobody, but immediately the person, the, 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 the child, get the rationale, the natural rationale around him or her, and understand what sin is about. So it doesn't matter whether you go to church or not. Sin by itself has a place in our environment that is very low. Nobody teach a child what sin is. We know by natural instincts. And so you don't dodge sin. You cannot say bad habits. When the Bible talks about sin, when God says sin, God wants to hear the word sin. When I come before God and I've sinned, I don't say, oh, that's my bad. I have a bad character. My, 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 my situation is not, it's not very conducive. Uh, this is my bad. My bad. Uh, 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 this is human error. Uh, all these things is not what God expects us to have. God expects us to understand that when it is sin, say sin. Let us all say sin. sin. Come again. Sin. I don't, I don't even hear you. Sin. sin. It is a way that is lost in our society right now. It's lost. People don't want to do things and then tell them this is sin. No, uh, this is not right. As for that one, they will accept it. This is bad. This is not good to do. But the way you use the, the way you use the word, this is sin. They see you to be some kind of something. And so for sin is not mentioned. Meanwhile, it's a sin. And so, one thing I want us to develop is that when you come before God and you are praying and there is the need to confess, mention, Father, I have sinned against you. Don't say, this is my bad character. This is my bad habit. This is something that I do that I don't know how to stop. No. Say, I have sinned against you. Forgive me. God understand and accept the word sin because that is what God says. There is no way God will caution anybody or caution anybody in the Bible and use any other word apart from sin. When David sinned against God and the prophet happened to reveal the sin, it was clear David used the word God, I have sinned against you. I have sinned against you, not against the human. Let us have that as a the concept. There is a key, a master key, that will unlock what sin is about. And I want us to identify sin before we look into what the master key. My, 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 my time is very short. In fact, my time is even now. It's 2 30 now. I should have finished preaching, but it's okay. Let me give you a little concept. And we will leave here quickly. What is the master key that can give you hope in reversal of the consequences? Because you know what, what happens is when you sin, there is a consequence and there is death. It's a process. Sin will come first before the consequence will fall. And then when the consequence falls, death comes. When you want the consequence, not only when we come before God and we are sin, we always want to get the consequence reversed for us. And so whatever we need to do, we are looking for the consequence to stop. The pain I'm going through of because of the things I did, the pain I'm going through, I want it to stop. Instead of going the other way around, what you did to bring the consequence, that thing needs to be reversed. That means that thing needs to be attacked so that the consequence can cease and death can be dealt with. And so God is telling us in the scripture that we read, supposing a man lives and that does this, does that, do this, do that, as we read, what will happen to the man? Will the man can he be classified as righteous? And the answer was no. That man cannot be classified as righteous. Because whatever he is doing is sin. But when he lives his life on the other way around, when he borrows people money, he doesn't put so much interest as they are killing us. 
They will harass you to get a credit card. And then you try to pay the credit card, it's a percentage. The credit card will blow your mind off. You are paying a credit card, you think you are making the effort, you are just paying interest. And instead of you, the money you borrow after all, if it is $20, you borrow, if you take you two months or three months to pay $20, you pay $30 instead. Don't try to picture that the thing to look as if it is so good, it is not. Folks, and that's what I'm saying. When you give lend money to somebody, do not put so much interest. So, Pastor, how then do you make money? You don't make money out of people's pocket. That is the topic and the picture the world draws. Your riches is in somebody's pocket. It's a sin to think that way. It's a sin. Your riches can even fall in somebody's pocket. Riches come from God. Your riches come from the hard work you are doing, not the mindset of thinking that money is. So now people don't work hard, they work smart. There is nothing like working hard, there is everything like working smart. Smart in the concept, in the sense that I can be warm, relaxed, and I will collect some figures, bam, 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 and collect somebody's phone, bam, 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 and, then, and be able to collect his money, wire his money into my account. I am warm, but I can technologically wire money into the person's account. This is a sin. Smart way. As a boss, how then do we reverse such a thing? Because folks, every sin we sin comes with questions. And the questions will learn you to death. These are the three things that we need to be very mindful of it. No matter what you do. Whatever you do, there is a consequence and the consequence will lead you to death. If you think the right thing, the consequence of the right thing is it will allow you to laugh. But if you think the wrong thing, the consequence of the wrong thing will allow you to death. And the scriptures we just read. When you carefully look at verse 10, before verse 10, let's look at verse 5. Suppose there is a righteous man who does what is just and right. He does not eat at the mountain shrines or look at the idols at the idols of Israel. He does not defile his neighbor's wife or have sexual relationship with woman during the period. Who does not oppress anyone but retains what he but retains what he took in pledge for a law. He does not commit about so it means if you really use the credit card and you don't even pay, it's a sin. You took a loan from the credit card and you have refused to pay. It's a sin. So if I were you, if Gauta Ganama, whatever I took, I pay back. Cash. Cash. Or what? If it is not cash, if I use my credit card, I know I'll buy $20. When the bill comes, I will not look at pay whatever. Uh, 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 the, 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 the time they use, they said, they said, uh, oh, oh, I forgot it. There's a time they use. If you're not paying all the money you have used, Minimum. Is that a minimum? Yeah. yeah, minimum. You pay the minimum. So if I've, I've used 